Hello everybody, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and we are going live today to do our beautiful four elements here uh, with Avatar The Last Airbender. So let me go ahead and talk about the fun stuff with the trace here because there's a little bit involved and we're also switching gears to help y'all more um, with, we're going to be providing a trace to give you details too. So I did that. I took a picture of mine today and then I'm gonna upload it too, just in case. Um, but we have these templates that we shipped out here first. So basically it's just the shape. So you get that, maybe there's the main one. All right, and then we've got all four shapes here. So all the elements that go into the four corners. And then these guys like that. Um, we are getting ready for a change in our website. I'm going to start shipping out a trace with graphite paper so that you can transfer the process. Hi, Jamie. <laughs> hello, hello, welcome. So be looking forward to that. I'm super excited about it because it's a way for me to get all the details in just very foolproof. So you just like place it right up next to the canvas and then line art right over the top. And it's just like a huge relief. So I used to do it all the time in college and I'm not sure why I didn't do it. I don't know why I've been hiding this secret from y'all. It's like it occurred to me all of a sudden, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to teach him my old trick from college. Hi Kelly, hi Kathy, welcome, welcome. All right, so but for right now, we're gonna make it through with these guys and these are available for you and then I'll be providing the extra trace too so you can have all the detail work that I did in here too. You'll have that available for you as well. All right, so let me do you a little up close here. I did this with my Sharpie. Um, so, and I'm going to tell you two ways about doing this. All right, so what I do, because I have to keep moving and teaching through the whole process and I don't really have time to just sit here with y'all and, and uh, I guess we could, I could just sit around and talk and <laughs> You know, and then let my paint dry. Uh, but since I really can't do that, I have to go ahead and do this wonderful process where I do a Sharpie version of it all first so that it will actually bleed through the paint and you can see it. And then that way I can find it again later and then paint into that shape. You can do that or you can actually just sweep all the paint all the way across. That's This is actually a little bit easier. So if you're working at home and you just want to go ahead and just working all that paint over the top, then let it set up and dry. Hi, Megan. Uh, then you can take your shapes afterwards, then pencil those on after the paint is dry. So that's another option. So two ways to go about it. Uh, but if you do all the trace in the beginning and it's not sharpied, you're gonna cover it all the paint. But don't worry, <laughs> that was a good trial run. That was your practice run, that's okay. Because if you don't have a Sharpie and you lose it all, it's okay. You can just let all your paint set up and dry and then you can go back in and reline it all. So those are your fun, fun options. Yay, we're so excited for that. And then let me go ahead and show you what comes with your kit. Uh, so we have all the paint and brushes that go with this. So brushes, paint, well, there's the back end. Front end, paint, yippee. And then of course your canvas also comes with this little kit and then those templates did or in the future I'm going to be so excited about uh, giving y'all the graphite paper and the trace which is going to provide so much more details and be so much easier on y'all all right so here we go we are going to start to paint I've got all my supplies laid out I've got water brushes I just use little plates for paint and then the first section, this is a really fun technique. So as I work into the background, I have this really beautiful kind of quadrant of turquoise that we're going to do first here. So I want to use my Viridian as a starting place. And so I'm going to put a little bit of this on my plate here. So here we go, here we go. We're going to do like a, kind of call that a dollop. All right, so it's about a quarter size dollop. I'm trying to be better about giving y'all size references with my dollops. Hi, Sean. <laughs> yeah, I did a Zoom class the other day and I said, y'all squirt some paint out. <laughs> There's a dollop of this and a dollop of that. And everybody went, what's a dollop? <laughs> so, <laughs> what size? Like give us references. So 
I started, you know, putting things in terms of quarter size, nickel size, dime size, dollar. Hopefully that'll help a little bit. All right, so now we have the cyan blue, and we're going to do about a quarter size dollop of that. Look at that. Boy, there's a dollop. <laughs> you probably don't need this much white. I get a little crazy with my white because I'm teaching and I always have a lot of white down. But I would say when you start with white, what's that, like a silver dollar worth? Yeah, I'm gonna have to really familiarize myself with sizes. But I like that. Yay, about that much white. Okay, so this is what I have so far. Hi, Jamie. So we have this to start with, with our turquoise. And I am going to start with my mama brush. Well, I put up all my brushes, how funny. <laughs> I was trying to tidy up here earlier and I put them all away. You can't ever find anything when it's put away. <laughs> you just, like I cleaned up and I'm like, oh no, where is everything? Okay, so I'm going to start with my mama brush. And speaking of our mama, let's talk about our cute little family here. All right, so in our little kit, we have mama, and then we've got little buddy, and then we have little bit. All right, so I'm going to start with my mama brush first. And as I pull into the paint, I'm just going to start to pull in a little section here on my plate. So I usually, when I say dollop in my class, that's typically what I'm referring to, is that's typically a dollop. So there you go. All right, and then I'm going to pull in another little section of the Viridian. Nice little dollop there. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of this cyan blue, okay? And then I'm going to mix all this together. I wanna to make sure y'all can see that. So that's what I'm going to start with. I tried to be approximate, but also about three equal parts of those colors. So that's what I've got. It's not quite pulling to the turquoise or the lighter shades of that that I want. So I'm gonna pull in more white. There it is. I pulled in more Viridian. I think I went a little too heavy on the blue at first. So I'm gonna start smaller with the blue next time. Do a lot more white, probably two dollops of white. Bigger dollop of the Viridian. And then just we'll just go with a touch of that cyan blue to start with. And see, that's getting more to where I want right there. All right, so that is beautiful. So with this, I'm going to go ahead and start to place this into this corner. Now, as I do this, I want really good coverage over the surface. So I wanna go ahead and take my brush and just lightly apply it over on the side. Little tiny X's, just crisscross that back and forth. Back and forth, back and forth, tiny little X's. Now, the way this painting works is basically I've got this really bright, beautiful quadrant of turquoise in this corner up here. So I'll work that in till about the midpoint. And as you notice, I'm covering all this up, but because I did that with Sharpie, I know that it will peek through later on. And there's a lot of stuff that I do because I am teaching, having to work a little bit faster than y'all, but you can certainly just wait and do your trace work afterwards. Or if you want to utilize that same technique and just let it bleed through, you certainly can. Most beginners actually prefer to just do the trace work later. It's a little bit more forgiving that way. Because Sharpie can be a little bit scary too because it is so permanent. So even if you do the, sharp, the uh, Sharpie trick, here's what I recommend on that. Do it with pencil first, make sure you're really happy with it, and then you can firm up all those lines with your Sharpie. All right, now I've gotta do a little bit of cutting work, so I'm getting right around the head there. So I'm turning my brush more to this position, holding it like a pencil, so I'm going to use that line edge to do the cutting work. So I'll go right about to the middle at the top of the head. 
cut in around that. The good news is too, this whole shape in here will be black. So if you do uh, happen to have a little oops and kind of go over into that area, you're not gonna mess up anything because again, this will all be black and it will all get covered up anyway. Super easy on that. All right, I'm gonna feather this out up here a little bit more so that I know that my Sharpie peeks through. I don't want it to be, you don't have to worry about it at home. You can paint super thick because you can let it dry and set up. I'm gonna feather mine out just a little bit so that I can be sure that I see it. There it is. Wonderful, okay, so I've got this first quadrant done in here. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and work into this section over here, and I need a little bit of the blue now. This needs to be a much stronger concentration of just the blue. So I'll pull into my cyan blue over here, and then a little bit of this white. Just pull that back and forth. I want a light blue now. All right, so there I go, I've got, hi Shannon, hi Terry. <laughs> and hello everybody else that I can't see. Happy Monday. I hope it's a happy Monday for you. We get so much interesting news now with everything going on in the world, we just go, oh well. <laughs> just, would it help if you worried about it? No. <laughs> It doesn't help, so, you know, <laughs> just go paint and, you know, it all works out. So happy Monday. <laughs> On that note, happy Monday. All right, so I'm doing this really awesome overlap between the turquoise and the blue. And so here's what's wonderful, and here's why this works. My turquoise is still nice and wet. So I did a nice little overlap between the two and I did that little crisscross back and forth. So it does a nice soft fade between the two. Real light hand on that going back and forth. And then if you do have to, if you have too much turquoise on your brush and you're having a hard time getting into that deeper blue that you want to get into, then sometimes you have to do a wipe on the side of the canvas here just to kind of help uh, eliminate some of that turquoise and get into more of the blue. Oh, thank you. Hi, Dana. Thank you so much. She said I have an awesome smile. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. I have to thank my mommy and daddy for that. They both have beautiful smiles, both of them. Big, huge smiles. We kind of have that, uh, that big mouth thing happening. Kind of like a, I don't know if my mouth is as big as Joey Roberts. I don't know if it's that big, but <laughs> it might be kind of close. Hi, Deborah, West Virginia. Oh, it's super hot West Virginia today. How's okay? Um, okay, I'm not sure right now. This morning, it was beautiful. And of course, in Oklahoma, we're just excited when it's not 103 or 105. We're thinking, oh gosh, it must be really cool and nice outside. But I do feel like it's in the 90s here. So it is, it's pretty warm, but we're not, we're not hurting. We're not in the hundreds, so that's good. That's a real blessing. We consider that to be a blessing when we're not in the hundreds. So yes. And then I just keep my little ocean waves going in the background. Just makes me, it's like, a, I just pretend, I make-believe. See, I'm originally from California, so I just have this whole make-believe world of being by the ocean, because I just listen to the ocean waves all day. All right, so I'm doing a little bit of cut-in work now around this shape here. Why am I doing that? I don't have to do that. <laughs> just don't, don't listen. <laughs> Just kidding, but we kind of forget that. I meant to uh, color all the way through. <laughs> oh well, I got stocking, see? You can actually just paint right over all that. That's what you want to do. What's that saying? Do as I say, not as I do. I'll catch up, I'll get, I'll get to going here. 
All right, so I've got my cyan blue and my white, and I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more of that crisscross action, working back and forth between the white and the blue. Very pretty. I will see that later, so it'll peek through, especially as the paint continues to dry. I'll see all that Sharpie work come out in the background. Now, again, recap, working at home. You can just do all this painting process to begin with, and then take our handy trace, push it in over the top, and that's a lot easier on you. All right, so I'm going to work this all the way to about right there. And I realize that this is setting up and drying, but I will re-wet that here in a moment when I have to do that soft blend all the way down. All right, so I've worked in that light blue on this side. It comes down to just about where the collar of the shirt is there. And then I will definitely need to start working in a different color, but I wanna make sure that this is nice and wet because as we do start to touch into that layer, we need to go wet to wet. They have to be wet to get that soft blend back and forth. It's really important there. And by the way, look at what I just did. This is really fun. So if you want a little bit more of a dramatic impact with your cyan blue, you can actually, while the paint's still wet, you can dip right into that with the tip top of your brush and just kind of push that back and forth, little tiny X's. And that works in some really dramatic, fun color into that background. And it doesn't get completely lost in the blend because you're doing a light blend on the canvas. And that's why you've got a little bit of that white peeking through, a little bit of that blue peeking through. So really pretty. And now I'm about to go into this really pretty, bright, beautiful magenta and some reds. And what's fabulous is that blue and magenta and reds, they all play very well together. They have a nice soft blend together. All right, I need to rinse off this brush. So I've got my handy pail of water. Let's see if I can do this without sloshing water everywhere. Sometimes I make a big mess. All right, so I'm going to take the brush, uh, firm pressure, spin it round and round and round and round. That helps release the paint. Can y'all see that? I think you can. And then keep checking, make sure it runs clear. All right, it's pretty good. So I'm going to get my towel. We gave mama a bath. Now we're going to dry her off. All right, she's fabulous now. All right, so now we need to do some primary magenta. Gorgeous color, love this color. This was one of my daughter's favorite colors for the longest time. Kids changed their mind. For the longest time she had uh, turquoise and then she went to magenta. Now she's with primary yellow, but wait, let me show you the amount. All right, so nice big dollop of the primary magenta. So this is a really pretty color. And I wanna make sure I've got some other things to kind of play with in the mix here. So I want some cadmium red. Oh, let me show you. Here we go. Have me a red. And let's get a little orange while we're at it too. We'll work into that. All right, so orange goes over here. In my world, that's roughly what I refer to as a dollop. So it's about uh, like a heaping quarter size amount of paint. Okay. So here we go, all these beautiful colors. Let's make sure this, well, I'm gonna cheat and go back to another brush because I wanna re-wet this so I get a nice soft blend. You can do that too, just make sure you rinse off your brush again. So I want this nice and wet because I want a nice soft fade between the two. Nice, soft, wet paint there, but I had to lightly fade that off into the background. Make sure and get your edges too. You wanna make sure and get a little overlap sweep over to that side. 
And of course, you're welcome to paint all of the edges as well. All right now, I'm working in with Mama again. Brighter colors this time. I'm going to start with a really nice mix of the magenta, just pure magenta at this point, and just lightly push that into the paint. So I'm gonna hold the brush more over to the side and see how it's already beautifully, softly blending into that blue. And it goes into a little bit of a, a light violet. So it's a beautiful mix between those two colors. Hi, Lo. <laughs> yes, hi, Tyler, it is. <laughs> Good morning. All right, so soft blend between the magenta and that blue, and it is turning into a violet, but that's still really, really beautiful. All right, now as I continue to pull this down, I do want to lighten up, so sometimes I may have to, I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick release. I'll tell you what else helps. Where is my, here we go. All right, I'm going to get my paper towels. Hi, Donna. And do a quick little wipe. You don't have to completely wash off your brush, but I'm gonna wipe off some of that excess See that? And that gets rid of that dark violet color because now I want to start to lighten up. So I'll go into that pure magenta and I'll continue the mix all the way down into this quadrant here. And then I'm going to gradually also touch into that cadmium red. It's going to start to lighten it up a little bit. And then as I do my cut and work, then I'll use the line edge of the brush And now I'm going to start going back and forth between that magenta and the cadmium red. So I'll just do tiny little cuts into the little, those little dollops of paint, just a little bit of pressure, and pull away from that and just start to gradually position this into the background here. And then continue on with those tiny little X's. Lots of repetition on this, just back and forth. Remember to get those little edges right there. You know what, I need a little bit of white. I think that's what I'm not liking here because I want a little bit of this. Yeah, there we go. See how that white kind of pushed into it? Made even a, a more beautiful, lighter pink. That's what I was missing. Aha. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay, so that's what I needed. And that's up to you. If you like it a little bit more vibrant, you can certainly not do the white. I'm liking a little bit more of that lighter fuchsia that starts to happen when you push in a little bit of white into your magenta here. So I'm really having some appreciation for that mix. So that is quite lovely. All right, I wanna make sure I've said hi to everybody so far that I can see. So hello, Lo, Tyler. Donna, <laughs> and there's always other people up there and I can't see you, but hello, hello. I hope y'all are fabulous today. It's Monday, I think. <laughs> Happy Monday. I talk to a lot of people now who say that since this pandemic has started, they're losing track of time. But time isn't what it used to be, that we're all I guess it depends on what you do for a living. If you're still, I mean, I still work all the time, but it is, it's weird. Like I have to, I do shows every day now. So it's not like I, I used to have this system where I would just do shows certain days of the week. And now I do shows every day. And so I just feel like every day is the same. <laughs> I don't know, it's just kind of weird. All right, so I'm going to continue to put in this beautiful light pink. Little tiny X's back and forth. That helps give me that nice light blend. I'm doing it again. You don't have to cut in here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Forget that. I did it again. Every time I see a hard line, then my brain is just trained to do cut in work. You don't have to do cut in work. Okay, because here's what's going to happen right here. You've got one or two possibilities, maybe more. Um, 
So you can have all this sharpied out, like me, just like me, and it will bleed through, which is beautiful. That's what you want. Because you actually want all this beautiful color to come through this design here. That's what you want. Or if you have nothing done so far, you're still just working in all of this background and then you can come back and trace later. Hello, hello. <laughs> Hi, Mohammed. Or Ali, you have to tell me, sometimes people have to tell me how to say their name correctly. <laughs> all right, so here we go. Lots of little, tiny little X's. So I'm going to move this all the way towards the center and then I am going to start to warm it up a little bit. All right, still adding a little bit more white to this, to this magenta here. Crisscross back and forth. And then while the paint is still wet, I want to start to warm it up with that orange. So I'm going to push into the orange a little bit. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. Man, I love that. I could have, I could do that a whole lot more over here. All right, but nice soft fade into the orange. And that was a beautiful fade too. That just went right into that light pink so beautifully and softly. And then as I progress over here, I want to really start to lighten up. So then I'm going to take the same brush. I'm actually just going to rest mine into the water. I have a ton of mamas, so to save a little bit of time, I'm just going to grab another one. But you will need to rinse off, give mama a bath, and then you'll have to go into the next section here. All right, so I've got yellow, primary yellow. All right. So here we go, we've got our orange, it's still nice and wet, and we're going to go ahead and push this back and forth. That's gonna be a really pretty blend too. All right, so beautiful blend now into the orange, and we do this by doing a lot of just quick little X's back and forth. So I'll work this all the way into the corner here. Man, I'm loving that. So this is a mix between primary yellow and that beautiful orange up there. And I'll take this all the way through that design because that allows me to still see it. Sharpie always bleeds through. That's a handy trick if you want it, or you can just wait and do all your tracing after your background work, either way. So I'll keep pushing this back and forth. That is very lovely. And I think y'all can see in all these quadrants, actually I'll pull it a little bit closer, but you can see how all the Sharpie really shows through. And I just realized, wait, there it is. No, there it is, okay. I cannot forget his little eyes. Those have to be done as well. I'll go back and tag that here in a minute. All right, still working in bright primary beautiful yellow feather it out little tiny little cross hatch strokes again feels like the letter X over and over and over again now we are approaching dry paint you're not going to get a soft blend there so I do have to do a little bit of pre-work in advance to get that nice soft blend and my blend is going to be a little bit of that it's going to fade from turquoise to green to this primary yellow here. So I'm going to start to work into just primary yellow. That'll give me a nice soft blend between the two. Then I'm going to go back to turquoise and green. All right, so I've got bright yellow green. All right, so I've got my little plate here. I'm going to put a little bit of that off to the side. And I also want, just in case, I want just a teeny amount of green here too. Yep, 
Yep, cadmium green. Pretty, pretty. Okay, so. Um, all right, I'm going to put Mama off into the bath. She deserves it, she deserves a lovely bath. All right, so here we go. We're going to softly blend a little bit more of this turquoise into this turquoise. That's the same color I was using, so it's matching really well. I wanna re-wet this whole surface area so that I get a nice soft blend into a fade of what comes next here. Let's still do a light little feathering out because we don't want any kind of a hard line happening. So I'll lightly feather that out a little bit. And now this is all reworked, nice and wet all the way up to that transition point. Then I'm going to start with the green first here. This is that cadmium green, little touch of that here on the side and I'll do a nice soft blend between those two shades. So this takes a lot of repetition, a lot of just going back and forth. Because I don't just quite get it on the first time. I've got a lot of reworking to do so to create that nice soft fade between the two sections. But what's nice about that is just be real patient with the process because that is very therapeutic to do this type of motion over and over and over again. All right, now I'm going to do that little trick where I do a quick little uh, wipe off to the side here. I wanna release some of those darker colors, but not completely rinse out my brush. And then I will go into a little bit of that bright yellow green. And my yellow here is still wet just barely, <laughs> but it's still wet down there. So we're gonna have a nice soft fade between the two. So then we just crisscross back and forth over that yellow. Now, I will tell you this too, if for some reason the cross fade process doesn't quite work out for you and you really struggle with it, First of all, you can always just practice and practice and rework it on the surface area. The other thing I will tell you is that some of you might prefer just a hard line too. So there's nothing wrong with taking like a, a Sharpie line and making quadrants in each section and just cutting in and doing you know tight lines of color and just blocking it off either. So that's another option if you're just not quite getting the hang of this fade in here and you want to really simplify the process, you can always do that too. All right, I want a little bit more of this soft fade here into the turquoise. So I'm going to just lightly apply this same little crisscross motion just right over the top. And this is a really fun process to experiment with though. It's really awesome. Love it, love it. Okay, so now we have all of our quadrants done. I do need to come back in to the eyes here in the center. So for that section in there, I had my turquoise over here to the side. I need a smaller brush. So let's do a little bit. So this is a little bit. This is our smallest brush. And on this side here, I want to go ahead and do some of that beautiful turquoise. So I'll work that into the eye here. And actually it's almost that over here, but it will do a soft blend into a little bit more of that blue too. So I wanna to touch into a little bit more of the blue over here. And then this little arrow do some turquoise in there as well. Again, this is my little bit brush, just holding it just like you'd hold a pencil. Um, if you're struggling with the end not being quite tight enough, remember to do a little twist with the brush. So I take it, I twist it between my fingertips and that will give me a nice fine point. And 
then I'll take this all the way down to this point here. I've got one more little section in here, right in there. So I'll take my brush and do, oh, whoops, I forgot about those guys. So a tiny little area in here. Let's do one thin line here too, just in case. And then my arrows will be lighter. So I need to put this little guy into the bath, spin it around a little bit. Remember to dry it off here so it's just moist. And then I will go into this lighter shade of that primary yellow, little mix of that orange as well. Just an even mix. I'll mix this up on the canvas. No, I'm sorry, on the plate. That's what this is called. <laughs> Uh, yeah, here we go. Is it early? <laughs> I don't know. It's Monday. That's what it is. It's Monday. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and paint into this beautiful little arrow right here, this bright yellow and orange. And then this side will be very similar, but I'll add a little bit more of a touch of pink to that side. So I'll, I'll touch into a little bit of that magenta and then start to work into this one, this little arrow. All right, this is looking awesome. Okay, so now what we want to do is highlights over the top here. These are all dry, so I can go ahead and work into those. Okay, so what we want up here, this is completely dry, which is wonderful. And then what I will do, oh wait, let me first say this. Um, so again, if you're working with our trace at home, so this is all set up and dry, so that's when you can actually come back in over the top of dry paint. Of course, you do want it to be completely dry, and then uh, everything, because you don't want to disturb any of the wet paint anywhere. But then you can just, you know, place those patterns now right over the top. Mine's done, just to save me some time. It's just peeking through here. So I've got a clean, just moist little bit brush here, and I'm going to go ahead and do a little twist into this is my cadmium red so right there cadmium red so as i twist into the paint it loads it up and it also gives me a nice fine point so then i will just follow these little lines that i've already done and cadmium red is actually a beautiful complementary color to this turquoise it's very pretty together and i hold it just like i hold a pencil the other thing that I'm doing is I'm using my pinky to help stabilize my hand. So I rest the weight of my hand on my pinky. This kind of acts like a training wheel on a bike. So it definitely gives you some stability so that you can do these little tiny curves. And you don't have to be concerned about a shaky hand. So that's a wonderful thing to take advantage of. Some people, um, you can kind of play with what works for you. Some people actually like to hold their arm and just like to hold it like that. Or some people will actually rest their arm on something. So if you're working at the kitchen table, you could actually find that you might even be able to just rest your arm on a kitchen table too. And that can really work well for you also. So good little, good little tricks to help stabilize. I do like the fact that these canvas are smaller than what we used to use in classes. So you have the better, you know, there's just more flexibility on a kitchen table, which I really like. So you can lay it flat and sometimes it just gives you more flexibility when you're working around it. So we are making little flame shapes right now. 
and I'm literally just following the line work that's already done. So all this will be provided for you. Hi, Rhonda, and good morning. Good morning to you too, lovely lady. <laughs> So when I give you the trace, as I promised, this line work that I'm doing will be there for you. But if you are going to attempt to freehand this, little swirl in the center is what we're doing. And a good way to think about a swirl is I always tell people it's initially like making the number six. So you take your brush and just make that little six. So that's kind of a start of it. It's like a spiral. And also don't hit a curve in your plate. That kind of, <laughs> that's a, yeah, see it's way easier on a flat surface. But that's like a start of it. But go in a circle, come back in for a little curve. And that's your spiral in the center. And then as we go to make those little points for the flames, it's kind of like an upside down letter V. So that's another way to think about that. I always try to connect these strokes to familiar patterns that we're used to doing. And then of course there's also the trace we provide. So you just trace over the top. So that's really easy. All right. So that's beautiful. I did this with cadmium red right over the surface. And I love it because all that color we did in the beginning just peeks through, so that's a really beautiful effect. All right, now over here, we need to lighten up quite a bit, and I need to use cadmium yellow. So it's not primary yellow, I'm gonna give you a visual on it. It is cadmium yellow. So this is a gorgeous color, very warm and bright. I've not used it yet today. So I'll do a little dollop over here, maybe, there it goes. All right, so a little dollop there. This is my cadmium yellow. I might actually push in a little bit of primary yellow to it as well, just to help brighten it up and pop out over the background here. We'll see if that's necessary. All right, so my brush is clean. And after I took it out of the bath, I made sure I wiped it off with the rag here too, so it is just moist. And then I'm going to do a quick little spin here into this paint. All right, nice fine point. So there's that. Um, one other thing you might wanna uh, attempt to play with, see what you like. A um, little bit of white maybe in this too might help brighten it up just a little bit. See how that really lightens it. Um, also a little bit of that yellow to see. Maybe all three. I'm really kind of liking that actually. I want it to be sure and be very light to come in and show up over the top. So now I've got my brush loaded. Do a quick little spin here. And I will do little tiny swirls. So it's a circle stroke here. Again, kind of feels like, you know, I said the number six, but if you tell your brain that, that'll usually help with the connection of controlling your motor skills to fulfill what you want it to do. Something familiar, just try to get something familiar. So I'll take this all the way around. This painting is for my son. He, this was his request. No big shock. <laughs> he was like, mom, <laughs> you have to do this painting. So, at first this might be a bit translucent, so we might want to come back to that, revisit it with another coat over the top. 
because at this point it's still very kind of translucent. You could also try adding a little bit more white to it. I'm going to do that real quick just in case. But sometimes you just push the paint right off the surface area and you just have to wait and come back to it. So just as a recap there, what I basically am telling you is that if you keep trying to push on paint to get a nice thick coat to show up over the top, if it's still wet, you can actually just keep pushing into it. Your pressure will just wipe the paint off. So we're kind of at that space where we, we need this to have some setup and dry time. And then you can rework in. I do want that to pop out with more vibrancy later. So I just need it to set up and dry for a little bit. Then we'll come back and visit that here in a little bit. All right, so now we are down here at the bottom and we need to find our darker blues now so that this will really have contrast over the top. And I just took my little bit and I gave him a nice, wonderful bath. Okay, so he's just moist. And then I'm going to go into this uh, primary cyan blue, which is right here. Okay, so you're getting into the positioning where you need to have nice thin lines and it's okay to use a little bit of water on this because it gives you a lot more precision, a nice fine point. But here's the caution, the little note of caution. So I'm working in a vertical state, so if I add water to mine, I run the risk of having a water run, which I do not want. But working at home, you can easily take your canvas, turn it to a flat position on your table, and then you can add a little bit of water, just a tiny touch of water to your paint, and it will really help give you a lot more precision with your work. I'm not going to do that today because I'm afraid I'll get a water run. So I just have just a moist brush here, quick little twist here into the paint, just like that. And then I will follow along. And my Sharpie's already helping me out a ton. You can just see how beautiful that is. It's really nice to have that little line there already. But I'll just lightly follow along on that. And this is just that primary cyan blue. Hi, Audrey. <laughs> Continue working this in. So these are definitely, actually let me get closer. This is definitely that shape of what looks like the number six. So if you tell your brain it's like making the number six, follow that motion and that's it right there. The next line that we do, make sure you can see that, is just a, a nice little wave. So I'll do a nice little twist here into my cyan blue. I've got my little bit brush and then I will just follow along. Take it all the way across here. And again, just lots of repetition. Take this again underneath. And then one more time. And little bits, definitely the way to go with all of this work in here because it's very circular, curvy, and we gotta have a little bit to do the curve. Now see how I'm using this edge here to help stabilize my hand and get to this? You can do the same thing with your kitchen table at home or wherever you're working. You could be on the floor with a coffee table, I don't know. Nice little thin line. Now, this is that thing I was telling you about where a little bit of water sure would be nice. See, it's getting that little bit of dry, rough spot right there. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of this to show you, make sure you can still see. Okay, so take your brush, 
just barely dip into the water, just barely touch. And then I'm gonna give it a little tap too, because I don't want a lot of excess on there. And then I will lightly go into my paint one more time. Twist back into it. So it's picking up the thickness of the paint to carry the weight of it a little bit, but it definitely added a little bit more water to it to make it a bit more fluid. And then I will go ahead and, for y'all at home, turn it flat and then work back into it. And then that will help that fill in very easily that water makes the paint a lot more fluid. But again, just, I would be careful and again, just lay it flat. That's the only thing you really have to do and you're, you're gonna be fine. Because if you do hold it, like I've got mine right here, you could get that water run, you just don't want the water run. Still have just one little section here at the bottom to do. All right, beautiful. Y'all see? I'm going the right way? No, I went the. See, I'm, I'm, yeah, here we go. I see things backwards. <laughs> so it's one of the hashtag the struggle is real on the filming thing. Okay, so on this side, same dark color, basically the same thing. And if you want, this is another area too where you can also add a little bit of that really beautiful Viridian. So let's try some of that too. Viridian with that cyan blue. That's going to make a very beautiful, deep, dark teal color. I'm gonna do that twist into the paint. That gives me a nice, fine point. And then I'm just basically going over the shapes we've already done. Because we have all these shapes all for you to trace. And then this looks like the letter F. And then here's one that's going the other direction. And then we have a spiral up here. So again, I'm switching back and forth. My mommy's here. Hi, mommy. <laughs> My mommy is Mary. <laughs> And her name is Mary too. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> All right, blue and viridian. And then we're going to go into our little spiral shape. lovely <laughs> well thank you mother also filled with greatness <laughs> my mom goes my daughter full of greatness thank you mom <laughs> all right so here we go I wanted to pop that with more yellow but you know what I'm gonna do that at the very end give it more chance to set up and dry then I will also come into all this surface area with black but I get switched to a bigger brush now so I'm going to go with my mama brush again and just black paint. I don't have any black paint now. Hold on. All right, so. Mars black. Little dollop like that. About a quarter size. And then I will take my mama brush and just push right into it. And then you can go back and forth on the plate that will help fully load the brush here. 
And I like to go ahead and do this line work here to begin with. And I definitely want this line to do as much of that work for me as possible. See how it's nice and thin on the edge? You wanna keep checking that too. If you start to get, sometimes the bristles can spread out. They fill with paint and they spread out. And so that will really make it challenging to get nice thin lines. So just kind of check it every now and again, make sure it's still nice and thin. That makes it very easy for you. So as much as I can, anytime I see a nice, thin, long line, basically long line is what I'm looking for. See, that gets to be curvy, so I won't be able to use mama in there. Too curvy, too small and curvy. But all of these little sections that are very, there's a really long line happening, I can definitely use my mama brush to help me out. When I get around those arrows here in a minute too, I will definitely have to switch. That's also a little bit too tiny. Hi Paige. More long lines here, just working in all that cut and work. on this. We'll see if I can't, actually I might be able to just cut in on all those sides. Oh, and that worked. Yay. If you need to, if you're a little bit uncomfortable with the mama brush around those tiny little areas, you can always switch over to your little buddy brush. Still has a nice flat line on the edge and you can use that as well for those tinier areas. All this is just solid black in here, in this section. Getting all that cut and work done first. And then up here at the top, I'll do as much as I can with this biggest brush, but I will have to switch over. To a smaller brush, because we have all these tiny little curves happening. So again, still using my mama brush here. Holding it just like a pencil to go around these little edges using the flat side, that line edge. close in here so about to have to switch over to my little bit brush 
So here is little bit. Do a quick little twist into the black. See, we've got a nice curve happening here, so I need my little bit brush to follow along that curve. And I, as I'm working, I'm going to go ahead and place my brush into the water so that it does not dry out. Acrylic paint sets up and dries very quickly. So you always want to just put them, if you don't have a chance to get to them, put them in the water just in case, because they'll harden up like little sticks. That's not fun. All right, doing a little curve around the ears. And then around the eyes. And I need a little bit more black. I'm running out. Okay, so one more time, I'm gonna get my plate loaded up with, this is Mars Black here. And we're going to twist into it again. That helps load it up, but it also twists it into a nice fine point. Okay. And then we'll just push into the little ears here. more little ear. Wow, this is pretty cool. I think we're like almost done. Okay, so I had one more thing I wanted to do up here. I wanted to reinforce that to really make it pop out because it's not light and I really wanted that to be very bold over the top, that shape. So I am going to do some more white with my cadmium yellow. Little twist here into the paint. And then we're just going to hit this again with another coat. So these are those little spirals that's becoming more vibrant. Every time we come back over it with another coat, see it's got that uh, dry background that helps support the weight of that new layer of paint. So it's really showing up a lot better now. And then we'll do this bottom one here. And these are just little spirals. Yay, that looks a lot better. Yeah, I can see it even in the monitor there. It looks a lot better. Okay, beautiful. All right. Okay, so this is our beautiful painting called The Four Elements. And we have the whole kit online. Uh, so just to give you an example of what we did here. So I've got these little guys. They're super awesome. They help us out a lot with the shapes. Have all the elements see so easy okay and then we've got uh, the uh, paint and then the brushes that all come with it so everything that you need in the canvas everything you need is all ready to go so we just make it all come together and then I have started something fabulous I'm so excited about this um, we have done, if you've already ordered this and you didn't get it I just started it this week so I've been writing curriculum like crazy. I did nine lesson plans yesterday. But we're doing Home Slice Homeschool, so a lesson plan will come with every lesson. And if you order this today and you're here with me now, hello. <laughs> and I will send you the curriculum and I will send you the trace to go with this too. So we just keep getting better and better and adding more and more improvements to stuff. So I'll definitely send that out to you to send it to you in an email, but we just, we make it as easy as we can. And the curriculum always has all the fun facts about what we're painting. 
plus it has some uh, good happy quotes and then also some a little tiny little uh, note about leadership. So there's some leadership curriculum in there too, just to help brighten your day, cheer you up, motivate you to go forward in life. So it's just really fun. So that is all online, tipsyartist.com. And then you'll just see a little section that says homeschool right up there at the top. Just click on homeschool. And actually, the way it is right now, because I'm still getting caught up, you can go anywhere you see painting kits. If you see uh, painting kits or homeschool, um, anytime you see the whole kit, I will absolutely, I will include all the curriculum with that. So I'll just, it'll be there. Next time you order, I'll just absolutely have the curriculum and everything. It's all going to be ready to go. So even if you don't see a note on there about curriculum with the kit, just know I will absolutely send it to you. So I just haven't had a chance to put it on the website. But yes, it will be there. So we're super excited. Yay, this turned out to be so cute. And then uh, I know we're painting again tomorrow. You know, if you've been with me a long time, you know I never remember what I'm painting the next day, but I'm sure it's awesome. But basically what you do is you go to uh, Facebook events that has all the events there. It shows what I'm doing every single day. Um, also, um, our website, it'll say schedule of events, and then it'll show it there too, all the events we're doing this week and for the whole month. Uh, so you can always check there too. Um, so yeah, you just come come see me every day we're doing it like right around 12 12 30 we may bump up to 12 30 um, that may be our new time we're kind of enjoying that here so it seems like y'all like it too because i've noticed when i switch up to 12 30 i get a lot more people online with me so which is really really cool so i guess we're all wanting just to sleep in more which is fine <laughs> <laughs> or just you know have a moment to like catch your breath and eat you know so it's gonna be awesome all right so y'all have a beautiful beautiful monday and i will see y'all tomorrow